We come to you a minute earlier than usual. We're proud to announce that in just a few moments' time, we'll be launching our Spanish language channel. France 24 has broadcast in French, English and Arabic for just over 10 years, providing a French perspective on world events in three major world languages. And now, with our Spanish language channel, our news coverage will be accessible to an extra 400 million people worldwide. Based in Bogota, Colombia, the latest member of the France 24 family will go live in just a few seconds at 6 a.m. local time. Beside me, as you can see there, is the countdown marking the seconds until France 24 Spanish goes live. My colleague Angela Gomez will be live in just moments. Let's watch. Buenos días, hoy es un día muy especial. En este momento se enciende la señal de France 24 en español. Estamos conectados con nuestras cadenas hermanas en francés, inglés y árabe en París para esta transmisión que llega a 350 millones de hogares en todo el mundo. Acompáñennos en la primera jornada de una gran aventura informativa internacional. Estas son las noticias. A partir de hoy, la cadena France 24 llega a América Latina con seis horas... The launch of our Spanish language channel is an exciting step for all of us here at France 24, a channel founded almost 11 years ago. So what just can viewers expect from our latest offering? Erin Ogunke takes a look. It's the same channel you've put your trust in since 2006. But in a language France 24 viewers are not used to hearing. A few thousand kilometers away from Paris, dozens of our journalists will now cover international news in Spanish. To develop in Latin America, it's vital to speak the most important languages on the continent, at least Spanish. It's a language that's essential in the digital world, and all of the major international channels have a Spanish version. As French people, we have the same Latin roots and such important relationships with Latin American countries. So a Spanish France 24 channel was long overdue. Brand new offices for a brand new team that has been in the works for many months. From today on, some 7 million households across 12 countries in Latin America can finally discover France 24. The language and the offices will be different, but the Spanish channel will share the same editorial line as the French, English and Arabic channels, a French perspective on international news. The programming of the Spanish channel will be exactly the same as the others. News every half hour and an update on major stories a quarter past and a quarter before every hour. There will be news on culture, the environment, history and sports, and there will be all of the same documentaries and special reports. We'll have a very strong interaction between the three existing France 24 channels and the Spanish channel. France 24 continues to expand. In addition to our team in Bogota, the new channel will rely on correspondents and reporters already present in Latin America and all over the world to cover the continent's latest news. On the digital side, this new adventure started just a few days ago. The Spanish version of the France 24 website will keep you informed 24 hours a day. Well, joining me live on set now is Gaspard Estrada, who is a member of our Spanish Channel's advisory board. He's also part of the channel's sponsorship committee. Basically, he's been there from the very beginning. So let's start uh, with the basics. Why uh, was the Spanish Channel created? What need is uh, France 24 Spanish Channel fulfilling? Well, I think that Latin America, contrary to other regions, where uh, France 24, more globally, France Media Monde, is located and has influence such as the Middle East or Africa. Uh, in Latin America, you have a strong uh, media landscape, basically divided in two parties. The, the, the first party, and the, the most dominant, it's uh, related to all the private-owned uh, uh, media channels and news groups, they are very strong and they're based in Latin America, such as Televisa, Globo, uh, in uh, Brazil. But uh, you have uh, always uh, tensions and which are depicted in the, um, the, the 
discourse and the message of these news outlets. On the other side, you have also state-owned uh, news media outlets, but which have uh, normally some bias, and they are um, directed by the government's uh, voice and influence. So there is a space for a public news service, a uh, news outlet, but w which has independence from the government, from the private sector, and which wants to depict Latin America as it is, uh, with an objective and really independent point of view, with a very professional newsroom. And I think that uh, France 24 in Spanish will fulfill uh, this, this, uh, this space. Now, not all of our viewers know this, but our French, English and Arabic channels are all based here in Paris. The Spanish channel will be based in Bogota, Colombia. Um, is that likely to change the way that the channel operates? Well, yes, in the way that you have a different newsroom. Here uh, you have the three languages that are working together. But I also think it's also a matter um, uh, of fact in the way that uh, you have um, a jet lag between Latin America and uh, Paris. So having a newsroom based in Bogota allows France 24 in Spanish to deliver um, these uh, um, um, messages uh, directly from Latin America. Um, which a newsroom based in Latin America with information from Latin America, which is going to enhance and improve the information delivered by France 24 to its uh, viewers. So I think this is a very good um, part of the good element, and it's part of the strategy of uh, this uh, this new channel. And how do you be? How do you expect to be received in both Latin America and the wider world? Well, I think there is uh, an expectation and there is uh, this uh, lack of um, truthful information from a public uh, media outlet. And I think that um, the, 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 the editorial approach of France 24 uh, will be well received by the Latin American viewer, especially because you have also a sister company called Radio France Internationale, uh, who has a strong uh, uh, audience in Latin America and the, the fact that uh, this uh, new channel France 24 in Spanish will be also uh, be part of uh, an other programs made by the newsroom of uh, uh, Radio France Internationale based in Paris will give a good element and a good complement to the information made in Bogota. And what, if you had to say, do you think are the biggest challenges that lie ahead for the channel? Well, uh, now it's to broaden the audience and especially diversify the distribution of this uh, news, uh, news channel uh, and especially being recognized as every uh, media outlet, uh, the, the, the power of a brand is extremely important. Radio France Internationale is very well known in Latin America, but now the objective is to bring that credibility uh, from RFI to France 24 in Latin America. Very exciting times for all of us. Gaspard Estrada, member of France 24's, uh, France 24's Spanish's uh, advisory board, I should say. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Now we will bring you more from Bogota, from the director of the channel, Alvaro Sierra, in a few minutes. Uh, moving on now to some other world news stories we're covering for you today here on France 24. There were scenes of jubilation across Iraqi Kurdistan following a referendum on independence, one that looks set to deliver a comfortable yes. But the government in Baghdad has already dismissed the results of what it calls an unconstitutional vote, saying it's not prepared to hold talks with the Turkish regional government. And there are also fears among the international community that the vote could further destabilise an already fragile country. Well, for more of an idea of what may come next, we can cross live now to Erbil, the capital of Iraqi Kurdistan, to speak with our correspondent there, Simona Fortin. Hi, thank you very much for speaking to us. You were at the polling stations yesterday. The yes vote uh, may be set to win, but it's not quite as simple as that, is it?
All the people we spoke to who exited the voting station said that they voted for an independent Kurdish state. Uh, it is expected that uh, the overwhelming majority of those who turned out uh, did cast their vote in favor of secession. But there are a lot of people who don't really share the same dream of independence with the Kurds, especially the minorities. Uh, there are Arab and Turkmen and Christian minorities in Kurdistan who fear that maybe their rights uh, you know, could not be respected in Kurdish state. I spoke to one man in particular who is from the Christian Syrian community here in Erbil. He said that he already feels right now that he is a second-class citizen. He, in fact, has to have uh, a residency to even live in Kurdistan, and he fears that his rights could be further curtailed should Kurdistan become an independent nation. Now, he did not go and vote. He uh, had concerns over whether the ballot was, in fact, secret, whether his, uh, his opinion would be respected or whether there would be consequences. So there are very much fears among the minorities uh, about the future of Kurdistan, uh, what exactly their place would be in an independent Kurdish state. And now the government in Baghdad says it doesn't recognize this vote. How are Kurds hoping to proceed without Baghdad's cooperation? What President Masoud Barzani said that he, uh, the referendum will be a first step in negotiating independence with Baghdad, that they will uh, speak about their future as two separate countries. Uh, of course, Baghdad has rejected that. They have asked the Kurds repeatedly to uh, delay or even post uh, cancel this referendum. So it's difficult to see how these negotiations will go ahead, because right now there is no willingness on the side of the federal government in Baghdad uh, to enter into a dialogue. The international community, of course, is also very much opposed to this referendum. Uh, so they could play a part in mediating, but uh, they are very much on the side of the Iraqi government here. Now, it will be very difficult for, uh, for Kurdistan to declare independence without international support. Uh, so without that dialogue, without support uh, from the international community, its neighbors and from Baghdad, uh, it's very difficult to see at the moment uh, how an independent Kurdish state would actually come into being, assuming that the vote will be a yes. Now, Iraq's neighbours, Iran and Turkey, also rejected the Kurdish independence vote. They fear the move could embolden their own Kurdish populations. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has today said that all options, from economic to air and land military measures, were on the table in response to the Iraqi Kurdish independence referendum held in northern Iraq on Monday. Well, for more on Erdogan's latest pronouncement, we can cross live now to our Ankara correspondent, Jasper Mortaba. Jasper, very strong words there from the Turkish leader. Just what is at stake for him here? Lots that is at stake. You know, as you said, he does fear that uh, Kurdish Iraq's independence would embolden Turkish Kurds, making Turkish Kurds turn to Ankara and say, look what the Iraqi Kurds have got. You better give us something equivalent or we'll go the same way. Um, today, Erdogan accused uh, the Iraqi Kurdish leader, Barzani, of treachery. But Erdogan accuses lots of people of treachery, including Turkish women who use birth control. So you can put that down as Erdogan talk. He also said uh, Iraq, Kurdish Iraq will starve if Turkey closes its land borders with northern Iraq. Now, it is true, Kurdish Iraq buys well over a billion dollars worth of uh, uh, food, consumer goods, construction materials, everything uh, from Turkey. And uh, uh, Turkey could really hurt uh, Kurdish Iraq were it to cut off that trade. However, such a move would also hurt Turkish manufacturers. And Turkey is just recovering from a near recession. So I don't think Erdogan will impose sanctions on food and goods. His third remark today, he's threatened to cut the oil pipeline uh, and the oil trade, which goes by tanker trucks uh, across the Iraqi-Turkish border. Now, the oil trade is the Kurdish Iraq's principal source of revenue. They pump or send by truck $7.7 .7 billion worth of crude oil through Turkey every year. Now, I think it is likely that uh, if he's going to apply sanctions, Erdogan will apply sanctions on the oil. How far he will go, whether he will close the pipeline completely or partially, we don't know. This is yet to be seen. Jasper, thank you very much. Jasper Mortimer reporting there from Ankara.
Now, France 24 has officially launched its Spanish language channel. They're operating out of Bogota, Colombia, and they've been broadcasting live for 14 minutes now. The creation of our latest channel, in addition to our French, English and Arabic channels, means that our coverage is now accessible to an extra 400 million Spanish-speaking people across the world. And we can cross live now to France 24 studio in Bogota to speak with the channel's director, Alvaro Sierra, what will France 24 in Spanish offer the Spanish-speaking media landscape? Well, hello from Bogota. Huh? Buenos dias from Bogota. We, we are just on the last, uh, very last minute of our very first uh, uh, news program here in Bogota. Uh, we launched the, the Spanish channel, uh, the French uh, Spanish channel, France. Uh, 24 in Spanish, just to offer to the Latin American public and to the general uh, uh, Spanish-speaking people around the world uh, a wealth of information that is, is, is delivered in the French 24, in the French 24 way. Uh, we will include in our programming, of course, a lot of information about Latin America, information that we will provide for our viewers and for people navigating the Internet and looking at our web page in Latin America and in the rest of uh, the Spanish-speaking world. But at the same time, we will provide information for our sister chains in English, in French or in Spanish. Uh, uh, as well as the wide uh, range of programming and magazines which are characteristic of Friends 24. Alvaro Sierra, director of France 24 in Spanish, thank you very much indeed.